the presentation is about the discovery of the tsunami deposit uh, uh, from the Bronze Age Central Eruption at Malia. And uh, of course, it's also a collaborative research uh, between archaeologists, Sylvie Malachetka, Maya Pumader, and geoarchaeologists. You have all the list of people involved in the paper uh, with different skills. And um, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, paper was published in the scientific report this summer. So I try to be, to be concise and to, uh, to present the main facts uh, of this uh, discovery. Uh, to, to introduce the question, uh, we just saw some, some recall about the uh, late Bronze Age Santorini eruption. Uh, it is now a well known eruption with uh, four main phases. We know that this was one of the most powerful eruptions uh, recorded during the last 10,000 years. And um, the, the, phase, the main phase for, for us is the fourth phase because uh, after the Plinian, eruption, the Plinian eruption and the frail magmatic explosion, we have a, a phase of uh, hot pyroplastic pure flows uh, enter into the Aegean Sea. And uh, this pyroplastic flow is uh, uh, responsible of the development of a huge wave that uh, triggers the tsunami uh, in, uh, in the northeastern uh, Mediterranean area. So of course there is other consequences of this er eruption, as tephra fallout uh, in uh, in northeastern Mediterranean area and uh, also in marine area uh, deep sea homogenite. Um, the, the the knowledge of the of the of the tsunami is is not uh, so accurate. Uh, there was a lot of research on on on, on tsunami deposits uh, during a lot since a long time and since the the discovery. Uh, of the of the eruption, and um, a lot of publication uh, mentioned some uh, potential tsunami deposit. But if you look at that uh, closely, uh, and the, the work has been done by um, Dave Lomineov at the beginning of the uh, of this century, and uh, uh, there is no not a lot of um, of uh, assumption that resists to the criticism. And uh, for the moment, uh, we. We think that there is uh, just five deposits that have been adequately described in order to be uh, to be investigated as tsunami candidates, the deposits. Uh, one in Santorini, one in Didim, one in Fethiye in the southeast uh, of uh, of Turkey here, and uh, one in Palikastro, and another one in Cesare offshore of the near near east coast. And of course, if you look at a map. Uh, the, the site of Malia uh, uh, seems to have a very good position in order to study the consequences of the Santorini uh, eruption because it, it is uh, uh, just uh, located at the south uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the volcano, uh, something that's, uh, around 120 kilometers uh, to the south. Uh, I, uh, just for a few words about the the, the, landscape, the organization of, of the landscape, because Arthur tell a lot of things, and uh, just to and Maya also. So just to uh, to some additional information, uh, the the Minoan town is uh, established on a low uh, plateau, uh, around ten to fifteen meters high uh, above the Aegean Sea. And it is separated from the sea by a, a, a rocky coast or a, a, a low cliff. But immediately uh, to the east, of, to the west of the of the of the of the plateau, there is a, a depression which is um, which corresponds now to a marshy environment. And this marshy environment is uh, uh, protected from the sea inundation by a, a beach barrier. Uh, on the north, and also by calcarbonite uh, deposits that have been placed since sand cons uh, uh, consolidated. So this uh, this area is very uh, favorable to do a paleontal investigation and uh, to uh, try to uh, track uh, the impact of the tsunami uh, at the local scale and uh, in the immediate proximity of uh, Minoan town. The research began in, in, in the 90s uh, by a work conducted by Jeremy Dalville in the framework of the French School of Athens. And um, from this work uh, with uh, five, uh, seven, sorry, uh, mechanical core, you see the, the machine here, um, it, it, uh, one was uh, uh, more studied. Uh, this is a core 
C6 that you observe there, just behind the beach barrier. And uh, it gives a, a lot of information uh, on the evolution of the march uh, to, to, to try to resume the information obtained from this coral. Uh, we have at first uh, the development of, of soil and uh, on, 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 on the same soil and on that side, uh, the uh, wetlands uh, pro progressively uh, developed. Uh, and uh, after this development during uh, the late Neolithic and the uh, Bronze Age, this is a sedimentation that was studied by Arthur uh, with uh, pollen analysis and fire signature. Uh, we observe a truncature of this, uh, of this uh, wetland sedimentation and uh, by a, a sandy uh, sedimentation. But uh, unfortunately, uh, this, this sediment was, was lost during the coring. And after that, we uh, obtained just uh, historical date, uh, uh, dating. So we have a, 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 an interruption of the sedimentation and we have no way to investigate much more the sedimentation. But uh, due to the, the date, uh, the dating obtained at the top of the, of the, of the marshy sedimentation, which corresponds to a PT layer, uh, which corresponds to the uh, to the 17th and 16th century BC, uh, it was uh, concluded that uh, it could be uh, uh, this core could provide uh, an, uh, an information about uh, the, uh, the role of the tsunami uh, locally, um, with a signature which uh, correspond to a trunk water of the uh, of the uh, marshy sedimentation. To go further, we try to develop a new cork drilling campaign uh, in the framework of French School of Athens, and uh, that's why it takes uh, so long time because we work in the, with with the French School in an area which is uh, an archaeological area, and we uh, uh, we spend a lot of time uh, to obtain the authorization and to have uh, uh, the possibility to make uh, this new cork drilling. Finally, we obtain uh, uh, the authorization, uh, and we do this, this cork drilling in 2015. And we had uh, uh, eleven core drillings to the uh, to the uh, to the seven uh, uh, previous previous ones, and these core drillings were were organized in uh, in transect and mainly located to the eastern part of the march in order to be closer uh, from the Minoan uh, town. So we use uh, a vibro core. Um, and uh, because we want to go deep in in the march, and uh, we cannot use a, a bigger uh, material to do. Uh, uh, this kind of coring in this uh, kind of ambient. Uh, from from that, we uh, uh, we obtain a, uh, we we send a lot of uh, samples to obtain datings on uh, organic material, mainly of on organic clay and millimeter size charcoals, and uh, which uh, unfortunately were mostly unidentified by um, by by specialists. But uh, nevertheless, we obtain uh, twelve HMS dates. Uh, for the period that we investigate for, uh, that means uh, from the middle of the uh, of the third million BCE to the million, the middle of the uh, second million BCE, and uh, we proceed as uh, as as usually uh, by uh, by using uh, the last version of of scale and the last uh, uh, calibration curve, and uh, we we develop the H depth modeling using. Uh, furthermore, on, on the core, we, on, so, on some selected core, we uh, develop a grain size, magnetic susceptibility analysis, and also geo geochemical analysis, XRF score scanner. That means uh, the relative, uh, we obtain the relative concentration of uh, some, um, some uh, ge geochem geochemical elements uh, on, on, the, on the selected cores. And of course, we uh, had uh, biological proxies, uh, after told about pollen, non pollen, polynomial, and fire signature. And we uh, do also for aminifera and ostracod analysis uh, on, one, on one core and on selected samples on, of other cores. From all this uh, investigation, uh, we have. Uh, we, we can deduce uh, uh, the organization and the evolution of the march during the uh, second part of the Eocene. Uh, it happens that the, the march developed from the late Neolithic, and it developed, as you can see on this uh, core, I will uh, use uh, a lot during this presentation, the core C21. Uh, you, we have these uh, Rubaka terra, terra Rosa that in place sand deposit and uh, um, uh, soil sediments uh, on, on the top, 
And after that, we have the beginning of the March year environment, uh, where air at the end at the inland uh, end of the of the March, uh, where the development of the March year environment uh, before uh, the development of uh, of sandy of sandy layer. But uh, uh, the March is developed on places in deposits and uh, sometimes with a very beautiful uh, Olsen pedogenesis. Uh, the evolution of the marsh uh, uh, before the eruption of the Santorini is uh, characterized by the progression of the uh, of the marsh environment uh, to, uh, inland uh, using two small uh, valleys uh, separated by a small a small elongated hill uh, made uh, from uh, uh, it, it's, it corresponds to uh, to uh, an outcrop of uh, of uh, calcareous rocks. And um, <clears throat> uh, during um, uh, during the uh, before the eruption, uh, there was a, a, an input of detritic sedimentation. Uh, Arthur explains that uh, uh, this morning, uh, um, uh, just uh, at the at the end of the third million BC, uh, which covered the uh, organic sedimentation in the eastern part of the, of the march, and this was much more developed uh, after the eruption. Of the Santorini volcano and the uh, uh, on the western part of the march, uh, there is, uh, on the contrary, a uh, development of, of the of the march. But all this area remain mainly a wetland. So uh, there is no big change uh, in the configuration of the of the wetlands uh, during the uh, uh, during the time concerned by the eruption of the Santorini volcano, and there is just a, a secondary change in the kind of sediments deposited in, in the wetland. Uh, in all the core, it, it's very difficult to observe a signature of a, a, a tsunami signature uh, on the sediment. Uh, at first, just one core uh, show evidence of, a, of a, a brutal event. And this is a core C21 that I presented before. And uh, you can see here again, and uh, you have here the, the March environment, which is very well dated, and before the, the development of sandy layers. And uh, this sandy layer is, uh, after uh, covered by, again, marshy sedimentation. The sandy layer, the U4 of, uh, of uh, C21, show a sharp basal contact, which is clearly erosional. She corresponds to coarse and medium sand sedimentation, which is very different from silty marsh deposits that we have in the main, in the main part of all the other pores. And it shows a high carbonate content. And if, you, if we look at the sediment, uh, you understand uh, rapidly uh, that it is related to a marine bioclast as a uh, fragment of mine shell and fragments of echinoderm uh, uh, main. <clears throat> if we look uh, more in detail at, at the sediment, um, at the sandy sediment, uh, we observe that uh, there is a first layer of sandy sediment, uh, so around 20 centimeters thick, and after that we have a silty uh, intercalated sedimentation and uh, the last part of the sandy sedimentation, which is around six to eight centimeters uh, uh, thick. So we have two uh, sandy uh, sandy event uh, there. If we look at the sedimentation of this sandy event, and we take uh, several samples, each uh, five centimeters, we observe that there is a multimodal com composition. We have silty part in the sediments um, that you observe on, on the curve and uh, uh, on the on, on, on the sketch uh, on the upper sketch, and we have uh, also a sandy part of the, of the sediment. And uh, more we go in the in the layer up, uh, more the uh, uh, coarser part uh, uh, decreases and the uh, silty part increases. So we have a, a finding of part seconds, which is very uh, characteristic of um, of a tsunami deposit. And uh, of course, this is very different from the. Uh, uh, marshy uh, sedimentation that you can observe on the on the on the on the curve uh, on the uh, curve at the bottom of the, of the, of the slide. Furthermore, if we look at the uh, content of the sand, uh, we, uh, we we can observe that there is uh, very few ostracods and foraminifera on U3 and U5 that mean on the uh, um, underlaying and overlaying uh, layers. And uh, we, we have uh, in the sand layer numerous foraminifera, 
And for example, in, the, in this sample, uh, 93, and in the upper one, uh, 278 a sample have been uh, uh, counted by uh, serving this group. So there is a, a mixture of um, microfossils, and uh, they come from different kinds of environment, mainly from shallow uh, environment, but we also obtain uh, 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 foraminifera from uh, intermediate and deep and deeper environment, as you can see here, uh, as you can see. Here. So uh, this um, this uh, sun layer is uh, clearly coming from the from the beach environment and the uh, uh, the, the shallow water uh, in uh, in front of the of the beach. And there is also a cycle species indicating uh, lagoonal environment. So. Uh, from these deposits, we, we, we have uh, different elements uh, in the description that uh, indicate that uh, the beach was the main sedimentary source and that uh, the, the sediment uh, rework a micro fossil from the beach, but from shallow environment and from deeper marine environment. And this is in favor of tsunami deposit much more than in uh, storm deposits. Uh, if we uh, accept this tsunami hypothesis, I will come uh, on my conclusion later on that. But uh, we we can say that uh, this uh, this uh, the wave of the energy uh, and, and sufficient energy to transport sand grain in suspension, but there is no huge energy transporting gravels or much more coarser material. And um, uh, there is as there is this uh, intermediate. Uh, units uh, 4B, uh, we have a uh, uh, tsunami energy that suddenly decreased and uh, during the uh, settling phase preceding a backwash or a low energy backwash. And after, after, after that, we have uh, another sandy layer, so it could indicate two successive runoff deposits at C21. If we look at the other corals uh, on the on the march, uh, for example, if we go on the uh, southeast part uh, near uh, uh, something like uh, 20 meters from uh, C21, we have this course C20, and uh, this core is very close from the C21, but there is no sun layer in intercalated of the deposit, and there is very light change in the geochemical composition at the time of the uh, potential tsunami deposit. But if we look um, uh, in the sediment, and uh, we take a sample, so two centimeters below well dated hydrocarbon samples uh, dated from uh, the, uh, the 16th century and uh, the second half of the 15th century BCE. Uh, we observe a foraminifera assemblage, which is very close, that's the source. Uh, observed on, uh, on the sun layer of C21. And uh, so uh, we have the, the, the same um, uh, marine signature and microfossil, even if we uh, are not uh, 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 seek uh, sun layers as observed on C21. An observation, another observation uh, interesting has been made on C22. We are on the uh, eastern part uh, of, the, of the march. And um, on, on this uh, on this core, uh, we observe a very um, uh, compacted layer, which uh, results from a mixing of uh, uh, anthropogenic elements and uh, natural uh, sediments. And uh, the um, and we uh, because we obtain a, a, a dating uh, from the from the at the end of the of the 16th century to and the 15th century BCE, uh, we decide to uh, try to uh, analyze the uh, foraminifera uh, content, and uh, we observe here that we have uh, uh, one, 119 uh, specimens of foraminifera belonging to shallow uh, uh, environment, uh, marine environment. So we uh, uh, again uh, have a signature of uh, marine input. In a, in, a, in a very thin layer and probably worked by uh, archaeological, um, uh, by human uh, action. If we go from shore, uh, near from the course uh, C6, uh, C C6, observed in, in the, in the, at the beginning of the century, we have this course C26, which is not so far from the uh, C25 that uh, Arthur used for the pollen analysis. Uh, we have this kind of information, which is very uh, common in the March. Uh, during the time uh, of the eruption, we have uh, no clear signature of, uh, of sedimentary event because there is no change 
uh, in the grain size. There is no change in magnetic susceptibility, as you can see on the slide, and uh, there is very few change in, in the other components. So it's very difficult to uh, macroscopically and also with the analysis to distinguish a specific uh, layer which could correspond to, an, to, a, to a specific event. Uh, so it seems that the, the, the tsunami has no impact on the sedimentation. If we put all this information together, uh, we, we can observe that in the Malia Marsh there is no airborne volcanic ash and no pumices in the sedimentation during the time uh, of, the, of the eruption. And we observe mainly a temperature uh, of the sediments to a discrete erosion at the time of the, of the event. And just few corals uh, show a, a marine signature of different, and we have different kind of uh, signature. So it uh, clearly um, highlights that the uh, consequences of the tsunami uh, locally was uh, uh, present, uh, uh, correspond to a complex geom geomorphological pattern. If we go now to the datings of this, um, uh, of, of the event, um, most of uh, not must. All the dating up until now uh, uh, for the tsunami deposits of Santorini are coming from the um, uh, tsunami layers. That means that they come from raw rocking uh, material uh, eroded by the tsunami wave and deposited uh, uh, inland. And so um, uh, when we use this kind of dating, you, you, you have the uh, the risk to to that to 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 have datings on rocking and uh, older organic matter, and so uh, it is preferable to date uh, before the tsunami deposit and after the tsunami deposit in order to constrain the the the, the event. And so we try to develop this method in uh, in uh, in Malia with by using all the uh, all the cores because uh, uh, we have no core with uh, all the information. So uh, from, from this observation, and we have a, a pre-tsunami uh, deposit, as you, as you have seen on C21, but also on C6. I, I, I've talked about that uh, sooner. And we obtain a combined uh, diet, uh, com com combined period uh, for the pre-event layer, which uh, uh, from the middle of the uh, 18th century to the middle of the 16th century BCE. And probably much more uh, in the in the uh, uh, 17th uh, uh, century BCE. We do the same for the post event layers, and uh, uh, we obtain a, a radio uh, radiocarbon in interval which correspond mainly to the to the 15th uh, century and uh, at least to the beginning of the of the 16th uh, uh, to the end of the 16th century. So. Uh, uh, that means that the event is uh, clearly uh, uh, contemporaneous from the uh, eruption of the of the Santorini volcano, even if uh, this eruption is still not well dated, as you uh, as you. So, uh, if we put all this data together, uh, we we think that we have three uh, decisive arguments which stick in favor of the present late Bronze Age tsunami deposits within the Malia Marsh. At first, we have this uh, a sun layer in an inner position, and uh, this sun layer presents a spatial discontinuity uh, uh, laterally and longitudinally. Uh, the other observation is that we have no other similar sedimentary event within the sedimentation. If we were in a marsh uh, prone to um, uh, storm inundation, we probably find other deposits, and it's, it's very difficult to distinguish a tsunami. Uh, deposit in uh, sedimentation uh, on which alternate uh, storm uh, deposit and tsunami deposit. So we have just one deposit and uh, this is in favor of the tsunami interpretation. Uh, furthermore, uh, we have uh, uh, this sand co comprising alloctobentic fauna, that means fauna from shallow environment and also from deeper marine environment. That's why we conclude that we discover in C21 a tsunami deposit. If we go uh, to the to the Minoan town and if we try to understand the consequences on, on the Minoan town, at first uh, we go back to P uh, excavation uh, conducted by by Maya, 
and uh, we uh, obtained two, uh, Maya obtained two data on the uh, archaeological layer of excavated in P, and they, they, they confirmed that this area was uh, occupied during uh, the body during the, the, the occupation of uh, Akuturi. Uh, she will precise that because I'm not archaeologist and probably I, I, I could make some mistakes about that. And um, uh, it, it appears that uh, all this layer has uh, contemporaneous from the uh, eruption of the Santorini uh, volcano. But till now, we have any evidence of uh, tsunami deposit within uh, the center of the Mal uh, Malia town by all the uh, excavated areas. Uh, so there is no indication of uh, an energy brutal event uh, within, the, within the town. Um, <clears throat> and all the uh, destruction observed, and there is several phases of destruction uh, in the late Minoan 1A period or in the early uh, late Minoan 1B period are related uh, probably to uh, other uh, kind of events and uh, to other time uh, period. Uh, therefore, it appears that the tsunami did not impact directly the Minoan town established on the plateau, as probably uh, it, is, it was the case for uh, Pali Castro. Uh, as, uh, as, as uh, observed in, by the micromorphological studies conducted on this side. So, uh, to, what kind of pattern we have for this tsunami uh, in Mali? Uh, we observe that the, the, the marine uh, deposits are mainly located at the end of the marsh, the south end of the marsh and east end of the marsh. And, um, uh, correspond to uh, sandy layer, tsunami uh, uh, in real, and to uh, the marine signature in the marshy environment uh, on C20 and C22. And on the other coral, which are frontal, which are much more to the, to the sea, we have mainly a discrete erosion uh, by, by the marine inundation. And because at the moment, for the moment, we didn't find any uh, impact on the uh, on, on the on the archaeological uh, excavation, uh, we think that um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 height of the of the of the run up was uh, probably less than eight meters above the current sea level. That means uh, probably uh, less than ten meters about about the current uh, the minimum sea level. So. Uh, to conclude and to compare with all the other uh, studied uh, tsunami deposit, it, it, it appears that uh, at, for the moment the Malia deposit are, uh, are, are probably the, uh, one, of, uh, one of the best um, candidates to uh, describe the tsunami kinematics uh, uh, of during the late Bronze Age. Probably has the lithium deposits, which uh, comprise also um, uh, tefra layer uh, at, the at the top of the of the tsunami uh, deposits. So it, it is very interesting. Uh, unfortunately, the publication is quite old, and the the, that, the dating control is not in, not so good at uh, at lithium. But for all the other um, uh, tsunami candidates, we have problems uh, of datings of uh, accurate accuracy of the datings. Or we have problem for, uh, of uh, a lack of study of the geomorphological context in order to understand the, ki the, the kinematic of the, of the tsunami and to well constrain uh, the role of the tsunami in, in, the, in the landscape. So uh, to, to, to conclude, to main conclusion, uh, we think that we, as, uh, as it has been said before for Pali Castro, uh, it's, uh, we have to, to look at the, at the more inland in, in the marshy environment or lowland environment in uh, northern Crete uh, coast uh, in order to try to find some, uh, uh, some, tsunami de some tsunami deposits. So we have to, uh, to make an extension in our investigation and not to, to stay on the seashore uh, uh, directly. And uh, the other thing uh, is that probably the, the modelization that proposed uh, wave H much higher than eight meters uh, for, for nozzle feet are, are, are wrong and need to be revised uh, from the data of, of obtained in mind. So uh, I stop there and thank you for your attention.